But that's what we're going to ask our next guest. Joining us now from St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador is Health Minister Jean-Yves Duclos. Welcome, Minister. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good afternoon, Louise, and good afternoon to everyone listening. So, Minister, how soon can parents expect to be able to get that shot for their children who are six months to five years old? Well, first, uh, Louise, as you said, this is a great news for families with young children. Uh, the, the first time that those children under the age of five can be vaccinated and therefore protected against COVID-19. We are working with provinces and territories to deliver those vaccines as quickly as possible. Everyone listening... With the health uh, care authority in the province in which uh, the person lives to find out when the earliest opportunity to get that vaccination for those young children may be. Right. And so are you thinking a matter of days, a matter of weeks? It will be a matter of days. Uh, we have um, great relationships with uh, Moderna. We have worked together really, really well, which explains in part why we have successfully vaccinated a large number of Canadians with two doses. By the way, uh, let me remind everyone that uh, what is important now is to be up-to-date vaccinated. So for most people, that requires a third dose. And for some people, they may also be eligible to a fourth dose. Now, having, been said, having said that, uh, soon will be the time for uh, parents of young children to also protect those younger children. Right. And for those younger children, how much vaccine do you have available already uh, yeah, you know, just in stock to give to these younger children? Well, we have uh, ample stocks and ample procurement to vaccinate uh, every one of these younger children, uh, two doses per child, as you uh, will have said. So one dose first, and then four weeks later, a second dose. We have uh, we have great relationship and a great contract with Moderna to make sure that all of those young children can have access to the doses that they will need. Minister, how important is it for this age group specifically to get vaccinated at this point? Because there are a lot of parents out there who are saying, wait a second, isn't there going to be an Omicron-specific vaccine available sometime in the fall? Uh, and wouldn't it be just, wouldn't it make more sense to get it then? Uh, two things. Uh, first, it's a, it's a very safe vaccine. Uh, safety is obviously of paramount importance. It's also effective. It protects against, it helps protect against uh, transmission, infection. It's not perfect, but it's vaccine. It also helps protect against severe cases of, uh, of, uh, of COVID-19. For adults, we know it protects against long COVID, which is a serious uh, issue, uh, something that can be quite detrimental to one's health in the longer term, and also protects parents and grandparents and other children uh, in the family and in daycare and other settings. Minister, you know, if this age group is going to be eligible for vaccines, will they now have to, you know, for children under the age of five, have to show proof of vaccination under the Arrive Can app? No, that's not uh, in the in, in the plan. And, uh, and, and as I said, it's really a matter of personal and family choice to vaccinate their children, their young children in particular. Everyone has, a, has a, obviously a, a choice to make. But According to public health and health experts, this is a very safe vaccine, a vaccine that also protects, as I said, not only the children, but those, those that happen to live uh, with the children, the, the daycare providers and fam other family members, parents and grandparents included. Now, Minister, speaking of traveling, uh, we've, of course, heard that the federal government is now resuming mandatory random testing for air travelers at airports, uh, off-site of airports. Uh, first of all, can you talk to us a little bit about the logistics here, if you've worked out all the kinks and how it's all going to work? Thank you. Uh, two important things are here. First, uh, all of that will be done outside of airports. There's nothing happening in airports or on airports. Uh, starting on July the 19th, so registration, the actual swabbing, the, the sending of the swabs to, uh, to facilities, laboratories, all of that is done outside of airports. The second thing is as we do this, do this we are going to be uh, able on an ongoing basis to keep monitoring the entrance of variants and where those variants may come from monitor the situation at the borders, which, as we know, is key to protect the health and safety of Canadians. And in terms of travelers, uh, why is this just for travelers arriving in Canada at those particular airports, those four major airports? Mostly for efficiency reasons, because these are the largest uh, four airports. Uh, also because 
most people come through uh, through the, through those uh, airports and by uh, by monitoring the entrance of variants and and, and 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 the viruses within those all of these those through those four airports we also have a great ability to know what happens uh, throughout the the country because we are able to know where people have come from uh, those people may be entering into other airports but when they enter into these four airports there is a random chance they will be tested and therefore we have an ability to know what happens also in other airports